we must understand that Hungry, Hungry Gen Conference, this conference, I'm going to mention just one thing about this conference. We are not a ministry. We are a local church. What makes this unique, and this is not to blow our own trumpet, is this, is that this is not super soldiers or supermen, one man show. This is a team and we are a local church. Deliverance has suffered a lot of times because it was usually practiced by people who don't have churches. In fact, a lot of times the ministry of deliverance was done in such a way, instead of making demons homeless, they made Christians homeless. I'm going to step on toes right now, but we have to bring realignment. Because the ministry of deliverance should never make Christians homeless, meaning where they don't have a home church. Your exposure to deliverance should not cause you to leave your local church. The exposure to deliverance should cause demons to leave you, not you leaving the church. Come on somebody. So one of the things I believe God is raising up Hungry Gen for is to restore the value to the local church. To restore the value among young people to the local church. God wants you to belong to a house. God wants you to respect the house and God wants you to dwell in the house. If you take a pot, if you take a, a plant and you keep replanting it from the pot every three hours, that plant will never have a chance to thrive. Christians who hop from one thing to another, one deliverance to another deliverance, but they don't get planted in the house of God. And sadly, we've had a lot of deliverance ministries, prophetic ministries and others who have created a distaste to the local church. No matter how imperfect local church is, it's still the body of Christ. It's still the bride of Christ. It's still the building Jesus is building. Let me say it again. It's the bride, it's the body and it's the building. I have a VSM, Vladimir Savchuk ministry. Jesus is not into VSM. He is into a local church. Jesus is not into charity organizations. He is into local church. Jesus is not into 501, 3, non profit. He is into a local church. I'm all for that. Mission organizations, ministries, para ministries. But Jesus Christ has a bride and his bride is a local church. Jesus Christ has a body and his body is a local church. Jesus Christ is currently building something on the earth and what he's building is not your platform, it's the local church. Come on somebody, are you glad for the local church? Are you grateful to God for the local church? Can you give me a little bit more juice on the monitor? If you can be kind to give me more juice on the, on the monitor. So I just want to bring just a little pastoral cor correction. What makes Hungry Gen unique and I'm just going to blow our own trumpet just for a moment is the fact that our pastor instilled love for local church from the beginning. And what you see here guys is this. Number one, we don't have superheroes. None of us are superheroes. We had a, one very powerful man of God that if I mention, everybody knows. His secretary called me and asked if he can come and speak tomorrow night. He was supposed to come in April conference, but things didn't work out. And I said, no. Why? Because I don't want to build things on quote unquote super stuff. We are simple people. We are down to earth people. The only reason you don't see us before the service here is because we're praying for a few hours. But other than that, we're not hiding somewhere. We are simple down to earth people. And I believe God is destroying that elite mindset and is raising common everyday believers who are full of the Holy Ghost, who will drive out demons, who will shake the kingdom of darkness, who will establish the kingdom of God. And they will be equipped to do the work of ministry. Somebody give God some praise right now if you are the soldier in the army of Christ if you know this is talking about you you have a chance to succeed amen another thing that I believe God is doing right now is he's raising up young people and there is a coverage and the older people a lot of times they provide the covering 
They provide the support. They provide the mental. They provide that affirmation. But God is raising up young people. And I think it's a shock to a lot of people. Th these kids, most of you won't even trust them with your car. And you're like, they're, they're doing what? They're running the conference. They're causing the demons to be driven because the power of God that was in young David is still God is doing still the same thing and I believe God is raising up an older generation to partner with the younger generation and we're not going to have a war between generations we're going to have a war against principalities against powers we're going to have war against witchcraft we're going to have war against spells we're going to have war against generational curses we're going to have war against cancer we're not going to have war against our fathers and against our grandfathers our goal is not to fight church our goal is to fight the kingdom of darkness. Our goal is to build the church. Our goal is to build generational unity. Come on somebody. Our joke, our goal is to build our families. It's to build our families. Amen. Touch your neighbor say no homeless Christians. Only homeless demons. If you get delivered and you don't get plugged into church, you miss the point of your deliverance demons should should be going around looking for a place not you go back to your local church oh my local church doesn't do deliverance do they preach the gospel yes that's your church oh my local church is not the pastor is not as good looking as pastor Vlad he is still your pastor <laughs> my local church you know they don't have services that long I'm hungry for more you know I'm not being spiritually fed the only time I complain that I did not get fed in my house is when I was a toddler you have a fridge the fridge is called the holy bible you can open on the first shelf is Genesis on the second shelf it's Exodus on the third shelf it's Leviticus it's Numbers it's Deuteronomy and you can pick whatever you want out of any shelf I see people say well you know I, I will switch churches I'm not gonna go to churches because on YouTube the preacher is you know he's giving us milk he's giving us meat he's not giving us milk and my pastor is giving us milk you must understand one thing about milk and meat milk is given to you by your mother meat you have to go and hunt your pastor is not responsible to get you meat your pastor is responsible to teach you where to hunt that means he's responsible to teach you which bible to use which room to pray at get your own meat because meat you get milk is given to you the church is given to give you milk so that you learn to hunt your own meat so you learn to plow through the bible plow through the commentary plow through other books so that you get your own meat so you grow into maturity of jesus christ spoil that spoiled brat babysitting mentality out of your life take the pacifier out put the sword of god into your mouth and it's time to rise up it's time to be raised to deliver it's time to be raised to save come on somebody god wants to build in us maturity and god wants to build within us strength if you ever find a perfect church don't join it because you'll ruin it every church is not going to be perfect if i can get one thing is for you to come back home please never compare your local church to race to deliver conference because our local church is a little bit different it, this is a conference the same thing as marriage is not a wedding wedding is nice big shiny every day marriage is boring <laughs> it's challenging sometimes there's laundry there's kids picking up from school there's bills to pay did you take care of this you know why are you dressed like this and you know that, that that's marriage and to be able to go to somebody's wedding and then hate your wife because you don't have a wedding and she's not dressed it is unfair so don't go back to your church and say man that was power but our church is boring our church is, is, is bad no 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 get that out of your head this is just to equip you to serve God in your local church not to compare conference to a church that's apples with oranges and that is not fair comparison amen all right the pastor in me is coming out another thing that I want to mention and that is deliverance has been demonized 
in the churches and it's time to deliver the demonized instead of demonizing deliverance instead of delivering demonized like the ladies that shared these people exist and I can go on for 30 minutes on how deep witchcraft runs in your own city and in your own culture it's not a Portland issue it's a United States issue now look at TikTok look at Instagram it's crazy how deep this used to be an African problem this used to be somewhere Caribbean problem this used to be Siberian problem this used to be Indian problem today it hit our own neighborhood and partially why it's hitting a neighborhood is because of the vacuum of supernatural the more seeker sensitive we become the greater vacuum we create but people they're not taking the bait of the seeker sensitive because they were created with eternity in their heart they crave supernatural they crave reality of God and when we hide the goodies like speaking in tongues when we hide the goodies like anointing with oil and speaking healing and we replace healing with medicine I'm not against medicine but when the church does not know its authority we create a generation that in their desperation and hunger go into the other side innocently ignorantly in deception and they get demons instead of getting help and then because we are ashamed of the ministry of deliverance we have to shut the doors down and say no you can't battle and struggle with this why because you prayed a sinner's prayer why because you got baptized this stuff you're making that stuff up it's mind over matter you need to see a psychiatrist you need to see you need to get on meds they need to lock you up in the mental institution one of the top ministers in the United States who believed that deliverance cannot happen to Christians until his own wife crawled during the night on the walls like a snake I met with him personally. I had a dinner with him. He looked at me and he said, Pastor Vlad, do not stop doing what you're doing. He locked his wife in a mental institution in Texas for 30 days until two old ladies from Florida came into his house and they said pastor I won't mention his name and they say your wife does not have a mental problem. Your wife has a curse. He looked at them. He says you don't know. He's literally every person in this room knows who this man is and he says I'm a great man of God. This is not the problem. All they did is drove out a demon. Her mind came back. This stuff is real. Guys, this stuff is real. People come up sometimes and say, do demons attack you guys after you do deliverance? They don't. Christians do. I sleep like a baby until Christians find out what we did. And everybody's fighting. You shouldn't talk about it like that. Why did you do registration? Why do you speak into demons? Why is it a lot of screaming? Why is it a lot of yelling? Why is it for us? All of this stuff. And I'm not in any way saying we shouldn't improve. What I'm saying is we are tired from taking advice from people from sidelines who don't want to get their hands dirty and get involved. Amen. God is making deliverance essential again. God is breaking breakthrough again. God is breaking, bringing revival again. Amen. All right. Now that I have four minutes left in Exodus chapter 17, I just wanted to kind of mention that for those people that are, that are here and it, it, it's just, I have to, I have to rent one more thing. You know what drives me crazy? When the pastor, when the, because I get right now, this is a season where I get a lot of messages. Hey, this, this pastor is, is criticizing your view on deliverance. And I said, okay, that's fine. You know what bothers me is when a pastor thinks it's okay to dress up like a vampire. Tomorrow night, like a vampire. Now, I get it. If that is your thing, but don't attack me or somebody else who drives vampires out. Come on, somebody. If you're okay dressing up like that, good for you. But Jesus says drive out demons. Jesus says to plunder the kingdom of hell. Jesus came to raise hell. Jesus came to establish his kingdom. Jesus came and demons were leaving. That is our Jesus and that is your assignment. Come on somebody. If you feel victory in your spirit, give God some praise. Woo. Come on somebody. Grab your seat for just a moment. Open to Exodus chapter 17 and then verse 9 it says, And Moses said to Joshua, choose us some men and that will go out and fight Amalek. Somebody say fight back. Tomorrow I will stand on the mountain of the hill with the rod of God in my hand. 
verse 11 so it was when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed somebody shout prevail Amen. and when he let down his hand Amalek prevailed if you look at the original story it's described in Deuteronomy 25 verse 17 it says the following remember what Amalek, Amalek did to you on the way as you were coming out of Egypt how he met you on the way and attacked your rear ranks all the stragglers at your rear when you were tired and weary and he did not hear God I want to share with you three simple principles about spiritual warfare attacking after you've been attacked hunting after you've been hunted fighting back when you have been fought against this is the story of Israel's first battle and the first time they actually had to employ and deploy themselves as an army of God even being in Egypt when God sent Moses and we see in Exodus God is speaking of Israelites not as a herd of slaves he's speaking of them as an army few times God referred to the nation of Israel as armies they were slaves they were whiners and complainers but God saw them as armies after a while when they came out of Egypt the Bible says that there was this enemy this enemy represents the devil because he doesn't play fair this enemy is ruthless this enemy cannot be hugged through this enemy you cannot cry to this enemy and he will change you can't convert disciple babysit or transform or medicate this enemy into somebody good Amalek is vicious Amalek is not fair Amalek is wicked Amalek thrives on the death of the innocent Amalek thrives on your weakness Amalek attacked unfairly from the back and who could he attack those who struggled number one if you're taking notes the enemy's advantage is wilderness your weakness and your weariness when did he attack when they were in wilderness when they were weak he attacked the weak only he never attacked the warriors he attacked the weak in the wilderness and he attacked when they were weary the enemy will take advantage of your heartbrokenness he will take advantage of your wilderness season and he will fuel you with depression he will try to fuel you with anxiety he will try to fuel you with ideas to go to the witch doctor to go to the to, to go and do a seance to do burn a sage and so many other things you must understand that his tactic is your spiritual wilderness I feel like there has been a warfare that some people in this room have been in it got intensified in the month of October and some of you you've been feeling that thing happening and maybe through your weakness perhaps through the weariness emotionally and in the spiritual wilderness you find yourself you gave in to the demonic attack maybe there has been an insult and an assault on your mind assault on your body assault on your family and assault on your marriage there is a tension there is no peace you can cut it with a knife in your own house and you feel a spiritual warfare taking place Amalek is on the loose Amalek is hunting Amalek thrives on your tears Amalek rejoices at your sorrow Amalek he rejoices he warms his hands when your family is shredded to pieces when couples fight when people indulge into sin Amalek's heart leaps out of joy he attacks the weak he attacks the vulnerable he attacks when you least expect it he attacks when you least prepared for it he attacks when you wish that your life will change and he comes and he takes advantage of that and he maximizes a moment to make your life a living hell you can't change Amalek you can't take him through prayer line you can't get him saved you can't get him converted he is vicious he is wicked he thrives on evil you can't get rid of him out of the earth he still roams around and these stories are just victims of his latest attempts he's real demons are not a figment of your imagination they are real and my friend they're not in Africa they're everywhere American demons just they're just more domesticated that's all because we gave our demons medical terms we gave our demons we domesticated them but no matter how much you domesticate a python a python is always a python no matter how you domesticate a hyena hyena is always a hyena no matter how you domesticate a snake a snake is always a snake no matter how you feed it no matter how you protect it no matter how you call it no matter how much you think it's helping you no matter how you call it a pet it's always something that is going to destroy your life Amalek came on an attack 
A second thing I want to let you know is Amalek attacked. He did not succeed in destroying Israel. The only thing he did is he woke them up. Spiritual warfare, God allows it to wake up a warrior inside of you. God allows spiritual warfare not to wipe you out. That's the enemy's plan. He will use spiritual warfare and he says, I will put an end to them. I will end them. I will finish them. This will be the end of them. That's what the devil thinks. I'm going to throw this at them. I'm going to throw that at them. I will cause this in their family. I will cause this in their health. I will cause this in their spiritual life. And the devil is out to kill. But you must understand, God is allowing that. Why? Because whatever can wake you up is good for you. When terrorists flew on 9-11 into the Twin Towers in the United States, they thought they would wipe America out. But in reality, they only woke America up. Because our churches got flooded with people the next day. Because people started to cry out to God. American military that was honestly lying dormant woke up. All its weapons woke up. All its soldiers woke up. And when America went back to war, those terrorists and all of their cells and the Al-Qaeda went into hiding. God allows spiritual warfare. I'm not saying He sends spiritual warfare. He allows spiritual warfare to wake up a spiritual soldier. There is a soldier that is sleeping inside of you that you don't need to wake him up when everything is peaceful. When your kids are serving God, you don't need to fast. You don't need to wake up your fasting life. But when hell breaks loose, you go on your knees. When hell breaks loose, you start to fast. When hell breaks loose, you book a ticket before you were looking for a ticket to Hawaii. Now you're looking ticket for deliverance conference. Why? Because a warrior is waking up. A soldier is waking up. Because God is waking up His saints. God is waking up His children. God is waking us up to the spiritual warfare. Because He has a spiritual victory. Somebody give God some praise. He wants to wake you up. Touch your neighbor say, He wants to wake you up. Please understand, when you came to this conference, God wants you to leave this conference being truly woke. Oh no, 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 not that woke. I'm talking about where you woke to prayer. You are woke to worship. You are woke to be getting your Bible again. You are woke to intercession. You are woke to fasting. You are woke to submission to your local church. God wants to wake you up. See what Amalek did is he touched the snake. Amalek did is he touched the tiger. What Amalek did is he poked a lion into an eye. And Amalek did not expect retaliation but they did. A bunch of slaves had a warrior inside of them and the attack of the Amalek woke up an army. This wasn't 10 plagues that Moses was bringing on Pharaoh. This was not some supernatural thing. It was a basic ex-slaves, ex-losers, ex-this and ex-that who had a warrior inside of them. And when he went on their territory and hit him, they woke up. And Moses said, this time it will be different. God is not going to come and take Amalek out. He says, Joshua gather an army. Ex-slaves, ex-drug addicts, ex-losers, ex-prostitutes, ex-maybe unreligious atheists. God is saying, wake up a warrior. Wake up your prayer life. Wake up your fasting life. Wake up your life of seeking God. Throw away the Netflix. Throw away the movies. Wake up your holiness. Wake up your right righteousness. Wake up your family devotion. Wake up church attendance. Not once a year but every single year. Wake up! Well somebody say wake up! Somebody shout wake up! And the last thing I want to mention is the first thing is that the enemy has an advantage when we are weak, when we are weary and when we are in the wilderness but God allows spiritual warfare to wake us up. You can't have a breakthrough if you did not have a battle. A lot of us pray for breakthrough and run from the battle. God has allowed this battle because He is preparing you for the breakthrough. This year, this week, I believe strongly in my spirit, the spiritual warfare that you were battling, something is about to shift in the atmosphere.
something is about to shift in your life something is about to shift in your family if you're watching me on YouTube drop that fire emoji if you're in agreement with me I'm releasing I really believe it's a prophetic word something is about to shift you were the one running from Amalek Amalek is about to be running from you a warrior is about to wake up the devil would not recognize the person that came back from race to deliver before you were afraid of the night and now the devil is gonna be afraid of you the night of God you will be the soldier of God you will be the sniper of God you will be the child of God with the sword he will come back to your apartment and you will stand with the sword of the Spirit he will come back to your family and you will stand with the soldier of the Spirit but the last thing I want to mention that this is something that we need to do when we go home and that is this you have to take the battle above the snake line I want you to notice where Amalek attacked them he attacked them those who were struggling he attacked those who were weak and he attacked those who were lagging behind Sometimes that verse is used to tell everybody who's sitting on the last row in the church that Amalek is going to get you. But I want to tell you that even if you're struggling, God still cares for you. Even if you're not keeping up with the program, God has still cares for you. Maybe you look warm and complacent and therefore God has, the devil has got you all chained up. God still cares for you. Maybe in your weakness and maybe in your struggle, you let yourself go and you let yourself in things that you regret today. God still loves you and His blood is still strong to wash you. God still has grace for the backslider and God wants to go and today we're going to go to war on your behalf. But the Bible says when Moses told Joshua, he says, I want you to gather an army. That means we're going to put up a fight. God is not going to step in and wipe out Amalek. God's going to give us the anointing. I'm going to tell you one thing. One of the things that we're giving to people who get delivered is anointing oil to go back home. You have anointing in you already. You have authority of God in you. I'm not going home with you. The Holy Ghost is. And trust me, he's better than any pastor. He is better than any apostle. He is better than any prophet. He is the living God. He is the best ghost that you need in your life. Every other ghost is afraid of that ghost because he's the Holy Ghost. When he comes, demons tremble. When he comes, sickness has to leave. Mountains shake at his presence and he's going with you. It may feel like you did not have a father, but the Holy Ghost just signed up to be your friend. He's just signed up to be your father that you never had. He signed up to be the mother you've never had and he is going to go with you. But Moses said to Joshua, he says, you go down and fight. I will go up and fight. Why? Because this is going to be a different battle. You can't win a battle in the valley. You have to climb the mountain and you have to take the battle into a spiritual realm. It used to be when people would come to the United States a long time ago and they would settle on different places. They had this phrase above the snake line and people who villagers knew above the snake line means that if you get a house that is above 1200 feet above the sea level certain snakes venomous snakes cannot live and function and breathe properly above 1200 feet so what they would do is everybody would try to build a house above the snake line meaning above where snakes can't suffer can't exist they would build their houses for their children above the place where snakes begin to suffocate and they begin to die if you want to have perpetual victory in your life you have to begin to build your life above the snake line you have to begin to fight above the snake line see what begins to happen here today and what happens when you use the word of God is you're taking that devil out of his realm of feelings out of the realm of the flesh out of the realm of the weariness out of the realm of the wilderness and you're dragging that snake into the realm of prayer into the realm of the word of God and this is what you have to know about the devil he is like a snake he has no stamina he has no fighting chance in the air he always leans on the ground to attack when you take the snake out of the ground you take the, him out of the place of his dominion and his advantage point 
when you get into a vantage point you take away his advantage point I want you to watch this little video behind the scenes right now that's exactly what happens when you begin to fast and you begin to pray when you spread your wings like an eagle and you begin to go in intercession you begin to memorize Bible verses you begin to anoint your house with oil you snap that snake you take that bloodline curse you take that generational curse of sickness and you take it up somebody shout up somebody shout up and you go up into the mountain you go up into the air you go up into warfare you go up into blood of Jesus you go up into the promise of God something begins to happen you will have authority when you take it above the snake line when you take your demons when you take your curses into the realm of the spirit when you take it into prayer when you take it into speaking in tongues next thing that happens is the devil has no fighting chance rise to your feet Thank you Holy Ghost, thank you Holy Ghost, thank you Holy Ghost, thank you Holy Ghost, thank you Holy Ghost and then something begins to happen. This snake has no fighting chance. When you stand on the Word of God, you took the snake out of the ground into a place it can't fight back. As long as you're living in your feelings, as long as you're living in your flesh, the enemy will have a fighting chance. Are you with me?